good for those of you who are with us virtually. We are still together in the spirit. And so we are grateful that we are all here today. Uh, we are a congregation seeking Christ and sharing his love. We hope you experience that while you're with us. We encourage you to do one thing right now. Get your Bibles and open it up to the Gospel of John, that fourth Gospel in the New Testament, the first chapter. We're going to be looking at that a little bit later in our worship. And our call to worship this morning comes from that passage, the 14th verse of the first chapter. The Word became flesh and made His dwelling among us. We've seen His glory, the glory of the one and only Son, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. Sisters and brothers, let us worship our God. together confess our sin by using the prayer of confession printed in our bulletins. Gracious God, you chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless. Yet we do not love our brothers and sisters as you taught. You destined us for adoption as your children through Jesus Christ. Yet we take our status for granted and fail to obey Christ whom he calls us to follow. With all wisdom and insight, you have made known to us the mystery of your will. Yet we stubbornly refuse to study your word. Forgive our sin, O God, and help us set our hope on Christ that we may live for the praise of his glory. Yeah. 
everlasting to everlasting. In the name of Jesus Christ, our sins are forgiven. church. Uh, first off, I want to encourage you, whether you are online or you were here in person, fill out a connection card online. There's just a button that says connect. We'd love to know that you're here. There's a place for prayers. The same thing here, your envelopes that you receive, those will be uh, offering envelopes, your tithes and judicial offerings, but also an opportunity for you to let us know you're here and a place for prayers. <clears throat> if you want those prayers confidential, just check it. If not, we have elders, deacons, and prayer teams to pray over these cards a number of times over the next two days. So please, please give them that privilege. So summer is really here in my sense, and today we are super excited. We're having a swing by parking lot party, and it's gonna be baseball themed. We have an actual uh, uh, wiffle ball batting cage that's gonna be part of the fun. Hot dogs, Cracker Jacks, hamburgers, fun games, and a great time. And did I say Cracker Jacks? And so in commemoration of ODU, I said commemoration, not celebration, of ODU defeating the University of South Carolina, who has won multiple World Series. Let me just say that to you, Dave. Uh, in commemoration of that, what are we gonna do? We are gonna sing, take me out to the ball game. Sing loud. Everybody Wins by Bob Goff. It is a great book. He is just a, he's just a wonderful writer and deep, deep Christian. That is available at the Welcome Desk for $10. You can get it on Amazon, however you want to get that. It is a great book. And if you want to be part of a small group, either virtual or in person, uh, just uh, let us know and you'll be able to, to, you can let us know on the connection card and we would uh, love to get you connected. Those small groups start on the 20th. Great things coming this month as well. FP, FPC Ladies Paint Night at Pino's Palette. I think I got that right. Thursday the 24th from 6.30 to 8.30. Fun, come together, reserve your spot online. It's $20 for supplies. Our men are going to a Tides baseball game on Sunday the 27th at one o'clock. You can email Joel Phillips to reserve your ticket for that. Coming soon, Vacation Bible School is going to be old school. We're going to do it in the evening, so it'll be for all of our children and our adults. Uh, we've got some great teachers for our adults coming, Anna Poss Harris, uh, Nate Griffin, and uh, I'll think of our third one as soon as I sit down, so it's going to be really exciting. That, huh? Oh yeah, Dana Calavera, that's right. Uh, it's going to be here for, it's going to be at 5.30 to 7.45 on Sunday, the July the 11th, Monday the 12th, Tuesday the 13th, please be part of it. And then our Massanetta Church family mission trip is coming August the 5th and the 8th. It is absolutely a blast. Please, please, please consider being part of that as well. Jordan, catch us up on what's going on at the shelter and the Urban Renewal Center. Good morning, everybody. How's everybody doing this morning? Excellent. Good to see you guys, um, especially those joining us online as well. Uh, again, as always, I will thank you to death. Thank you for everything that you guys have been part of with us as we have journeyed through this uh, wonderful endeavor that is the Center Temporary Shelter at the Old Greyhound Station in downtown Norfolk. Uh, I want to give you the quick, quickest and the best update of all. We had our health inspection on Friday. It got 100% approval, but with that, we are able to move from 55 tents to 80. So, yeah, please. <laughs> I just 
because of this you guys going over there, but with that also, we do have an even bigger need now. There's a guarantee that we need more food, and that when in that I specifically mean breakfast and dinner. I uh, that we need money. Uh, so I've been putting that official ask out here uh, this morning. And as I do that, though, I wanted to make sure you guys had a chance to actually see some of you haven't had a tour yet. No shame on you, but just shame. Uh, so with that, I'll give you the opportunity to take a look at this amazing video and see the inspiration. Thank you. Just beautiful. As we uh, move into a time of prayer, I'm reminded of the first two verses of Psalm 91. Whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say to the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God and whom I trust. So as we move into a time of prayer, we want to lift up um, the world for peace in our world, reconciliation in our country. I want to give gratitude for all of those who um, serve our country, especially those who are deployed right now and separated from family. We lift them up today. We pray for those who are facing surgery and recovering from surgery. For um, Margot Taylor, who had a fall last week, so prayers for her for healing. For Chris McKinnon King, who continues to heal at the Moss Center in, in Philadelphia. We also want to lift up the family of Josh Shockley. Um, Josh, is, Josh is a member of our congregation, um, joined right before the pandemic, and was part of our AV team, so helped us get through the pandemic. Um, he uh, died from pancreatic cancer on Tuesday, June the 1st, and there will be a service of witness to the resurrection at Westminster Reformed Presbyterian Church in Suffolk, um, who, where he was a member for many, many years. And that service will be on Wednesday, June the 16th at noon. So please surround Josh's family with, with your love and prayers. We also want to lift up the 112 prayer requests through, that we received through our connection cards last week. Prayers for family and friends, prayers for healing, prayers for those who are dealing with great loss, and prayers for guidance and discernment. Let us pray. Gracious Father, Lord Jesus Christ, you are the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. We greet the dawn of redeeming grace with this radiant beams from Christ's holy face. We have passed through the night of doubt and no longer fear that you will not ever forsake us. The one who was with you when you blessed all creation, Father, has come as our Savior full of your grace and truth. We gather as those empowered to become your children and give you thanks for this grace upon grace. There are those for whom each new day is threatening, whose fear blocks out the vision of your grace. We pray for them. We pray for the unemployed and the homeless who find no sense of fulfillment. Their days are spent awaiting the call that does not come. Help us to continue to stand with them and be their companions. May we lessen their struggle through our support and encouragement. Fill us with resolve to change a society to its empowered fullness. Be with those, Lord, who are mourning, who are enduring great loss and pain. Be with those who are struggling with sickness in body, mind, and spirit. 
You are the beginning of goodness and the end of our striving. And you abides a hope that cannot be doubted. You have caused light to shine in our lives. Help us to lead others to that light so that their day may dawn brightly. And hear us, Lord, as we together pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. That was really beautiful and, and it's so so crazy that she's so young and so talented. I am going to ask my friends Jonah and Eli if they'll come up. Um, my name is Jackson. Uh, I am the Youth and Young Adults Director here. I am subbing in for Hunter today. She is out. Um, but we have some really fun and exciting things going on. Which one of y'all wants to hold the mic? Y'all can sit right here. Oh, you think the soda's there. I'm going to give each one of y'all one of these. And can y'all tell me y'all's names? Eli. Oh, what's Jonah. Up? And Jesse. Yes. Jesse! Come on, bud. And what grades are y'all in? Fourth. 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 Okay. And Jesse, what grade are you in? 
solid answer. Uh, there we go. <laughs> All right. So, do y'all know what's coming up soon? No? It's summer's coming up, right? When are y'all out of school? Y'all out of school soon? I think um, after next week. After next week. That's pretty exciting. What's, what's one of y'all's favorite things to do over the summer? Sometimes we go to the beach together. The beach? How about you, Jenna? Pool. Bowl, pool? Okay, pool. Jesse, what's your favorite? Ah, okay. So, so one of my favorite things to do, um, and so my wife loves the beach, and I'm not a beach person, um, but one of my favorite things to do is I go out on the beach after the sun leaves, because I'm not a big sun person, and I look for crabs. Have y'all ever looked for crabs? Uh, not me. Not you? Uh, sometimes. Sometimes? What, it, what would you need for crabs at, in the dark? Probably a flashlight. A flashlight. Can we cut the lights real quick? So I got, I brought just enough flashlights for everybody. What we're not gonna do is we're not gonna shine it in people's eyes. I know that's fun, but we're not gonna do that today. Here you go. I'm gonna cut the lights. So, so what do flashlights really do for us? They help us see. Well, better. <laughs> they, they help us see. See, lights help us see, yeah. Um, <laughs> It doesn't make our flashlights any better, does it? <laughs> so I need a flashlight in my own eye. Does that hurt? Uh, don't, don't do that, bud. You're, no, let's, let's, let's not shine flashlights. So, so our, uh, our passage today is in John 1, and I gave y'all each a uh, verse, and one of y'all starts in verse 4, and it has a big 4. Is that yours? Do you mind reading that for me? And then was life, and that life was the life, light of my God. Okay, and then verse 5. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. So, so we're talking about Jesus here, and um, this is in John 1. We're starting in John 1 this, uh, this month, and we're going through the book of John. And so who John is, is John is the disciple of Jesus, knows Jesus really well, was in his circles and everything, knows him really well, and he says that Jesus is the light of mankind. And that's, that's high praise. You know, if my, if my best friend came to me and said that, Jackson, you're the light of mankind, that's some high praise. I, I don't deserve it. Um, but, but Jesus is, is being praised by, well, well, let's not shine our eyes, but... Um, and, and so Jesus is being praised by John as the light of mankind that darkness cannot overcome. And so I brought this uh, brown paper bag, and one of the things that you can see um, when the lights are off is that the light shines through the, the paper bag, right? Now that doesn't work with everything. Sometimes if I close a door, you might not see the light, right? You know. But this is saying that Jesus, no matter what's in between, no matter what's through, Jesus will always shine through. And I think that's really cool. So, so what is it talking about, the light shining? What does that mean? It's talking about um, Jesus dying on the cross for our sins. But it's even talking more to that because Jesus used this, this uh, same story in Matthew 5 when he's talking about, you know, we're the light of the world, a city on a hill. That, that cannot be hidden. We're supposed to be the light to the world and we're supposed to show God's uh, glory through all we do. You know, we're supposed to do good things for people. Bud, you are gonna hurt your eyes, bud. Um, we're, we're supposed to do good things for people. We're supposed to care for people. We're supposed to love people and we're supposed to show them God's word. Let's, uh, let's pray it out, all right? Dear Lord, we just thank you for this day. I thank you for this time. I thank you for Jonah, Eli, and Jesse, Lord, that uh, they could come up here, Lord, and I just thank you for the opportunity to speak. Um, we thank you for being the light in this world. We thank you for giving us a demonstration of how we could be a light in this world. And we just thank you for all that you do in Jesus' name. Amen. Can I have that splash? Good job, Jackson. Uh, okay, 
as uh, Jackson said, we're, we're going to be spending some time this summer in the Gospel of John, and, and Lena's put together a, a great series. We're calling it sort of the fear of missing out. So what she's, what she's done is to put a series together in John of stories that only appear in the Gospel of John. And I think it's going to be really fun and engaging for us and challenging. <clears throat> and we're going to begin with the first chapter of John, the first 18 verses. And so if you get our emails, there's two things, uh, yesterday and today, there's a, there's a link to a YouTube uh, little study that I did. It's 11 minutes long, I think 11 minutes and 30 seconds, on uh, sort of a deeper dive into the theology and the biblical, part, the biblical pieces of what's going on in this passage. So I encourage you to look at that. I think it would really be helpful for you. We're going to start doing that every week. The, the other thing is, is that you're going to see today, if you got the Sunday email, and if you're not getting these emails, let us know, um, you're going to see an article that I'm going to reference uh, in a few minutes. So, John chapter 1, <clears throat> beginning with the first verse. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life. And that light was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light, so that through him all might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to everyone is coming into the world. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision or a husband's will, but born of God. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We've seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. John testified concerning him and cried out, saying, This is the one I spoke about when I said, He who comes after me has surpassed me, because he was before me. Out of his fullness we have all received grace in place of grace already given. For the law was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God. But the one and only Son, who is himself God and is in closest relationship with the Father, has made him known. That's the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I came across an an article, just a a review of it, and then I downloaded the, the white paper. It's a it's an article or, or a white paper by the economist Guthrie Greylow, Tarek Pathak, and Christopher Walters. And it just appeared in the National Bureau of Economic Research. I just read that all the time. <clears throat> it's a working paper. This is intriguing to me because it goes to the question of the value of preschool. And I don't know if you remember, but back in the day, there was a lot of conversation about, say, for example, the Head Start program and whether the Head Start program had any real value for children. And most of the studies show that in preschool environments, and let's just kind of stick with Head Start with this for a moment, that in those preschool environments, that there was really no measurable difference between the kids that were in that program and the kids that weren't in first, second, third, really through elementary school. There was really no measurable difference. And so there was a lot of conversation about it just not having any real value. And it's been an interesting study that's just been done by these folks, these economists because they found the absolute perfect study. You see, it's really hard to study these things because you know, when you say, well, the kids that went to preschool and the kids that didn't go to preschool, well, there's all kinds of factors in why they went or why they didn't go. So how do you create just sort of a, a level way to be able to, to get at this? So they actually found that in Boston, uh, decades ago, Boston <clears throat> decided they were gonna provide what they wanted to be as universal preschool for kids. But they didn't have room for everybody. <clears throat> so they did a lottery system. And in that lottery system, <clears throat> they chose, you know, just randomly chose, these were mostly poor kids. They chose these kids randomly to go to preschool, and then they had kids that obviously didn't make it in because they didn't make the lottery. And then they started tracking those kids. And sure enough, <clears throat> out, of, out of preschool, 
when they went into the first, second, third, fourth grade, there were really no measurable differences between those kids that went and those kids that didn't go. But as they began to, as they continued to track them, they saw huge differences. Differences in the number of kids, the percentage of kids that graduated high school, the kids that took an SAT, the kids that went to college, the kids that weren't incarcerated, the kids that weren't suspended in high school. A huge difference that the kids that were in preschool were so much better prepared, and so what they call this is the sleeper effect. <clears throat> Just basically the idea that you can't measure it, you don't see any difference to begin with, but, but as you track it longer, and they came to realize as well that perhaps as you study this, and it's a perfect study, right? I mean, it's, it's just the perfect environment for it because it's random. As you study this, you start to recognize that it's really not so much about academics, but it's about, it's about motivation and perseverance. And one of the things they say is the crucial ingredients may be caring adults and a chance to play fundamental parts of good early childhood programs, large or small, private or public, to make you more robust and resilient. I find that intriguing. <clears throat> to think about the value of how we love kids, that value of how we welcome them and, and include them, the, the value of play, the value of that freedom to know that there's, that there's someone outside their nuclear family that cares for them and, and engages them, it's, it, it's intriguing to me. This week we had two funerals in our sanctuary, one for, for Micah Horn, um, beautiful baby boy who was born and met Jesus on the same day. And then we had a funeral for Lucinda Brown. So Lucinda died at 96. And Valina led both beautiful, beautiful, ser beautiful sermons. It was just a powerful both service. <clears throat> One of the things that she said about Lucinda, Lucinda was always the first at church. She was usually here by seven if she could get here. Uh, and then she needed people to help her. She lived at Hope House. Um, she's just a, a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful woman who, who had some challenges in her life and yet she just, she just always glowed. And, and, and Valina was sitting with her on a swing just a few weeks before she died of cancer and began to talk to Lucinda about, about dying and death. And in that conversation, one of the things that Lucinda said to Valina is, I'm going to be with my mom. I remember when George Floyd was murdered. He cried out for his mama just as he was dying. And so I want to ask you this question today. Who's your mom? Now here's what I mean by that. Not simply security, but who and where and what are the places where you know you are unconditionally accepted? Or no matter what you do, no matter where you've been, no matter how horrible it has been, no matter how bad you have been, that you know that you are unconditionally accepted. John, the Gospel of John, is a sleeper gospel. <clears throat> Here's what I mean by that. The Gospel of John does this. The other three Gospels we call the synoptics. They're, you know, Matthew, Mark, and Luke. They're the ones that just tell the, not just, but I mean, they tell the story. And they tell it and they present it, they tell it in chronological order, they just, and John is very, very different. As soon as you open it up, and we're gonna talk about that for a moment. As soon as you open it up, you see that there's something just very, very different. <clears throat> because John, that, see the, the synoptics go this way, John goes this way. <clears throat> John immediately wants to say, is that, is that God is in it, through it, and above it all. That from the very beginning, from the very first words, when John says, in the beginning, he's going back to Genesis, <clears throat> in the beginning, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. In the beginning, everything, God, Jesus was already there. The Son of God was already there. The preeminent Christ, we say. The, this, the, the, and, and, and everything has been imbued with the glory of God, and the glory of God is Jesus. The glory of God is the Son. <clears throat> and, and, and what John wants to say is that it's not just living this life, it's not just doing this, trying to get to heaven, but it's realizing that it's here now. We can witness and experience it and know it now. We don't have to wait. 
We don't, we don't, we don't, it's not prolonged, it's, it's present. <clears throat> I think it's what Paul is saying in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, that passage on love, when he says, I love it in the King James, when he says, we see in the glass darkly, but then face to face. We now know in part, but then we will be known, we will know fully even as we are fully known. You would see what he's saying? He's saying, he's saying we can see it now, it's just dim. Or, or in Romans chapter 8, which is, oh Lord, Romans chapter 8 is so amazing to me. When, when, when Paul says this, he says, no, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all of creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus. Nothing. Because Jesus is here. He wasn't just a man. He's God, and he was at the beginning. He was, he was even before the beginning. It's, it's about eternity. And, and what John wants to say is, you don't have to wait. You can experience it now. You can see it now. John's mama is the I am Jesus. You'll notice through the summer that, that, that the only I am passages where Jesus says, I am the good shepherd, I am the way, the truth, and the life, I am the bread of life, they only show up in the Gospel of John. Why? Because in the other gospel, Jesus is saying, don't tell, don't tell. It's not time, it's not time, it's this way. And John wants to say, everything he does is the great I am. Going back to, 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 to Moses at the bush, and he says, who are you? He says, I am. I am who I am. This, this experience that we have, this opportunity to, to experience the eternal now, is what John wants to say and wants to get for us. He wants to say, you don't have to wait, it's here now. It's, 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 it's this beautiful, powerful thing. And sometimes, sometimes we just miss it, right? I mean, sometimes we, we, we just, we're so caught up in our own stuff. We're so caught up in our woulda, shouldas, couldas, and, and, and we just, we, we're so busy and we keep our head down and, and we don't have, we don't take the time to lift up and, and to see what's really, what's really happening now. But this is part of eternity. I mean, when you read the book of Revelation, it's so clear. I saw a new heaven and a new earth. But it's still this. It's part of it. It's the opportunity for us to experience it and to see it. You see, you see the sleeper effect of John gets to the why, not just the what. Why did Jesus do this? <clears throat> In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through Him all things were made. Without Him nothing has been made that has been made. In Him was life, and that life was the light of mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. <clears throat> the true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. The Word became flesh and made His dwelling among us. The Greek actually says this, the Word became flesh and pitched his tent amongst us, the tabernacle of God. The God that traveled with us in the wilderness is the same God now through Jesus that, that has pitched his tent and, and, and as, <laughs> as Eugene Peterson says in the message, said he moved into the neighborhood. It's this idea, this opportunity, this privilege of us to be able to see, to see the presence of God in everything, to, to not just have to wait, but to know it now. And so I, so I think about the, about the whys of life, not just the what's. <clears throat> I don't know if, you, if you're of a certain age that reflects mine. You remember that decades ago, a guy named Robert Fulgram uh, wrote a book called uh, All I Really Need to Know I Learned in Kindergarten, right? Remember that? And, uh, and it was you know, just a huge bestseller. Everybody talked about it. Everybody preached about it. Just, just, just hung in. And, and so I, 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 I looked him up yesterday. And I, and I found something where, uh, decades after he wrote it, he said, here's my credo. All I really need to know about how to live and what to do, how to be, I learned in kindergarten. Wisdom was not at the top of the graduate school mountain, but there in the sand pile of Sunday school. These are the things I learned. <clears throat> Share everything. Play fair. Don't hit people. Put things back where you find them. Clean up your own mess. Don't take things that aren't yours. Say you're sorry when you hurt somebody. Wash your hands before you eat. Flush. I will say it again, men, 
flesh. <laughs> warm cookies and cold milk are good for you. I don't know why I put flesh and warm cookies and cold milk right next to each other, but he did. <clears throat> Live a balanced life. Learn some and think some and draw and paint and sing and dance and play and work every day some. Take a nap every afternoon. Men, I will say it again, take a nap every afternoon. And when you go out into the world, watch out for traffic, hold hands and stick together. Wonder. Remember the little seed in the styrofoam cup. The roots go down and the plants go up. And nobody really knows how or why, but we are all like. Goldfish and hamsters and white mice and even the little seed in the styrofoam cup, they all die, and so do we. And then remember the Dick and Jane books and the first word you learned, the biggest word of all, look. Everything I need to know, I learned in kindergarten. Let me share a different list with you. <clears throat> First grade, Melrose Elementary School, Miami, Florida. Miss McLaughlin's class. Little first grade boy goes into the bathroom. You know, that's back in the day, there's bathrooms for all the first grade classes. There's reasons for that, too. I will say it again, flush. <clears throat> Little boy goes into the bathroom and uh, he's doing his thing. He looks up in the windowsill and sees a lizard this long. I think it was an, I, I mean, the story was it was an iguana maybe. Scared to death, he opens the door and runs out into the classroom while he's doing his thing. <laughs> Mrs. McLaughlin, while everyone is laughing and joking and pointing, runs into the bathroom sees what it was, takes these paper towels, grabs it, holds it in these paper towels, and walks out to the class and says, it was a lizard. And all the kids are laughing and still pointing at the little boy that came out. And all of a sudden, she fakes a stumble and she drops the lizard. And the lizard runs down the aisle and all the kids scream bloody murder and scream and jump up on their desks and all of those things and the wisdom of a first grade teacher diffused one of the most embarrassing moments of a little boy's life. Or Mrs. Owens and a little boy's second grade teacher who left suddenly in the middle of the year and came to say goodbye. And he, rugged, he ran and rugged, he ran to her and hugged her and he realized that she was the first black person he had ever touched in his life. And she felt just like his grandmother. Or Ms. Owen, the teacher that a little boy had four years in elementary school, decided to get married, went, went to New Orleans for a honeymoon and this little boy says, when you come back, bring me some oysters. Not even that he liked oysters, he just heard about them in New Orleans for some reason. And she and her husband come back with a styrofoam cooler that they had been icing down for days and knock on a little boy's door. Or Julie Ann Harris, the fourth grade crush of the entire class and a little boy saves his money to buy a strand of puka shell for a necklace. And he's so nervous he can't give it to her. So he sees her coming up the stairway, he's going down, and as he passes, he throws it at her. <laughs> and the next day, as he lifts up the wooden part of his desk, he sees a beautiful handwritten note from a little girl that said, I love it and I am so glad that you gave it to me the way you did. I would have been too nervous had you just handed it to me. <clears throat> and even in the fourth grade, he could realize 
that beauty had little to do with sexuality and had much more to do with the beautiful handwriting of grace and acceptance. As we look back on our lives, we realize it's not really what we learned, but what we experienced. Those places of unconditional acceptance and love. And all these sleepy years later, at least for me, I realized that it was the great I am Jesus all along. And all the woulda, coulda, shouldas are put aside. And for those of us who know him, we didn't miss out on anything. This is the power of the church, my friends. This is the welcome and embrace of little children that come. This is the welcome and embrace of friends who stand at the graveside. This is the unconditional acceptance of our God. And we have the privilege to let the experiences of our lives shape the experiences of so many. If only we decide to show up. So I want to encourage you. What you learned, where you went to school, all that stuff, I guess it's a big deal. But at the end of the day, it's who are you and why. Share that. A world that strives and feels as if it fails day after day after day becomes wounded and angry and painful and violent. But the love of the children of God who know I'm going to vote you with my mama. That's a story to tell. Amen? Amen. Friends, we have the awesome privilege of celebrating the Word made flesh for us today and celebrating His love and grace and responding to His Word by giving of our tithes and additional offerings. So um, all of you here in the sanctuary, you received an envelope when you came in. So if you have an offering you'd like to give, you just put it in the offering um, envelope and leave it on the, um, on the pew in our greeting seat team. We'll collect those after the service today. Um, those of you online, please uh, find the button above the live feed where you can give or you can, anyone can use text to give. And that number is 757-530-5683. Type in the word give in the amount and send the text and it will walk you through the giving process. So let us continue to worship our loving and graceful God as we give of our tithes and additional offerings. Yeah. 
sleeper effect. Sometimes it takes, sometimes it takes time. But the seeds that are planted, the seeds of love and grace and acceptance, they take root and they mold and they shape. So there comes a time for the glory of God to be seen and known. It's coincidental, but today is, would be my mom's 102nd birthday. I cannot wait. To feel her up again. But you know, if I believe the word of God, I don't have to wait. The same love in which she lived is the love of Jesus Christ. And that's here today. So when you go forward, I encourage you to love each other, to embrace, to hug, to to care, to share. And as you journey out, I pray that maybe there is someone that the Lord will place in your heart today that is the person with whom you just need to say, I love you. And that's it. I love you. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen.